Check your patient identifiers and put a matching label on a 50 ml tube containing a pre-aliquoted 20 milliliters of PBS that doesn't contain calcium or magnesium. Gently mix your sample by inverting the tube a couple of times checking for clots. Transfer your sample to the 50 ml tube. The max volume of sample we can use is 4.5 ml. Try to dispense the sample at the bottom of the 50 ml tube so you can use the top portion of the PBS to rinse out the original sample tube. Due to the fragile nature and sometimes limited concentration of plasma cells, you want to be extra gentle handling the samples throughout this process. Mix the sample gently by pipetting up and down or swirling within the tube. Make sure to jot down the sample volume on your setup sheet rounding to the nearest half mil. Centrifuge the sample at 300 G for 10 minutes without the brake on. This is program 5 for the centrifuge on the fish bench. Because the brake is off, this step will take roughly 30 minutes. During this time, you can thaw the DNA swan solution to room temperature if your sample is over 24 hours old. After you spin your sample down, set the vacuum to a slow aspiration speed and discard the plasma, careful not to disturb the buffy coat or red blood cell pellet. Ideally, the volume will be close to or a little less than the original sample volume. For samples not drawn earlier that day, add DNA swan solution and gently swirl the sample. This will help reduce cell clumping. Next, label a 14 milliliter tube. I find it also helpful to write small lines with a Sharpie on the tube at 10 milliliters, the original sample volume, and double the sample volume. Transfer your sample into the 14 ml tube. If it's less than the original volume, you can resuspend it with DPBS rinsing out the prior tube. Next, add equal parts easy set red blood cell lysis buffer to the 14 ml tube with your sample. You can use the buffer to rinse out the 50 ml tube if you didn't in the prior step. Gently mix your sample up and down two to three times. Next, add the positive selection cocktail to the sample. This cocktail should be colorless. Set your pipette to the correct volume using the table. Add the cocktail and gently mix it up and down two to three times. You can cap your sample if you want to. Set a timer for three minutes. Next, you will be adding the easy set dextrin rapid spheres. This cocktail has a brownish tint and appears to have a coffee grain sediment at the bottom when unmixed. To ensure proper distribution of particles, vortex the rapid spheres for 30 seconds. Once your timer runs out, uncap your sample and add the rapid spheres using the same volume as the positive selection cocktail. Again, gently mix your sample and set a timer for 3 minutes. Next, we need to top off our sample using the regular easy set buffer, which is different than the lysis buffer we used earlier. Use the table to figure out how much buffer to add. I suggest using a transfer pipette to add it to your sample. Once you've added your buffer, mix your sample gently and place it into the magnet uncapped. Also be sure that the magnet is in a spot accessible to the vacuum because you don't want to move the magnet once you put your tubes inside. Press firmly against the bottom of the tube to make sure it is snug against the back of the magnet. Set your timer for 10 minutes. Once your 10 minutes is up, put a clean pipette on the aspirator and set the vacuum to a slow aspiration. Leaving the tube in the magnet, slowly take off the supernatant until you hit the sludge around 1 to 2 milliliters. Take the tube out of the magnet. You should see a brown streak of cells on the back of the tube. Add buffer back up to the desired volume, rinsing off the cells from the back wall and gently mixing. Place the tube without the cap back in, making sure to push the base of it back against the magnet. Set your timer for 5 minutes. Repeating the previous step, place a clean pipette onto the aspirator and gently take off the supernatant. This time you want to go to the bottom of the tube, taking off almost all the supernatant and any clotted material. Take the tube out of the magnet. Add buffer up to the desired volume, rinsing the cells. Gently mix and then place the tube back into the magnet. Set your timer for your final 5 minute incubation. After 5 minutes, take off the supernatant going all the way to the bottom of the tube. Take the tube out of the magnet and add roughly 2 milliliters of buffer, rinsing the cells off the side of the tube. Transfer your sample from the 14 ml tube to a regular 15 ml tube with the patient label. Add hypotonic solution to the sample dropwise, going roughly up to the 5 ml mark. 
Gently agitate the sample as you add the hypotonic solution. When you're done adding hypo, mix the solution gently up and down with the transfer pipette. Incubate the sample for 16 minutes. In the meantime, make fresh fix and place it on ice or put it in the freezer to chill. After the 16 minutes is up, take the sample out of the incubator and add prefix. Dropwise, add one milliliter of fix to the sample. Gently pipette the sample up and down to mix. Place the tube in the centrifuge for 10 minutes at 1000 RPM with the brake on. This should be setting three on the centrifuge on the fish bench. Take the sample out of the centrifuge and aspirate down to the pellet. Resuspend the pellet by gently flicking. Add roughly five milliliters of fix dropwise to the pellet. Use your pipette to gently mix the sample. Place the tube back in the centrifuge for 10 minutes. Repeat the fixative step as needed for a total of two to three times. Once you've completed your fixes, aspirate down as close as you can to the pellet. Resuspend the pellet by gently flicking. Using a preset pipette, drop your sample onto one well of the slide. Hold your slide on the water bath for a couple of seconds and then place it on the slide warmer to dry. Once your slide has dried, check the concentration of cells under the microscope. If the concentration is too low, try adding another drop of sample to the well. Plasma cells tend to be larger than other cells and have a fried egg appearance with a large nucleus in the middle. After you drop your slides, they can then be processed for fish.